What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question six in the math three questions that North Carolina released this past school year. We are just supposed to find an equivalent expression to this monstrosity. Simple idea, really complex in terms of just how it looks to solve it. So this question will test us on dividing rational expressions, and they also threw some negative exponents in there just to be mean. But let's start by talking about these negative exponents. If you remember from maybe this year, maybe in a previous year, if I see 3 to the negative 2, that's the same thing as 1 over 3 squared. And if I see 1 over 3 to the negative 3, that's the same thing as 3 to the third power. Essentially, the idea of a negative exponent is that we need to rewrite this expression with a positive exponent on the other side of a fraction. So if our negative exponent is just by itself or in the numerator of a fraction, it goes to the denominator. If it was in the denominator, it goes to the numerator. And to extend that idea, whenever you see a fraction where all the exponents are negative, you can just flip the whole fraction over and rewrite everything except the negative exponents where what was on the top is now on the bottom and what was on the bottom is now on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with these two fractions so we can go ahead and get through this dividing mess. Um, now this fraction has x minus 2 all squared in its numerator and then x squared minus 5x plus 6 to the first power so that's just leaving this the same in its denominator and we're still dividing it but now this is by x minus 2 all squared over x minus 3. So now, this looks a lot more like a problem that we can deal with. But, how do we divide fractions? Well, let's say I were to write the fractions 1 half divided by 2 thirds. The way I would solve that would be, you might remember this trick, I would use keep, change, flip. I would keep 1 half the same, change dividing to multiplying, and flip 2 thirds to 3 halves, and now I just multiply across my numerators and denominators, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 2 is 4, so 1 half divided by 2 thirds, I changed that to 1 half times 3 halves, and it gave me 3 fourths. So now let's extend that idea to dividing these rational expressions. Alright, so, I pull out, keep change flip. This fraction stays the same. So this is going to just be x minus 2 all squared divided by x squared minus 5x plus 6. I change dividing to times and I flip x plus 2 squared divided by x minus 3 over to be x minus 3 over x minus 2 all squared. And now, before I multiply across my numerators and denominators, I'm going to notice that x minus 2 squared appears in both my numerator and my denominator. And this is no different from if I saw, for instance, uh, let me use green for this, 1 third times 3 halves. I could cross out this 3 because it appears somewhere in the bottom and somewhere in the top. And it would be a lot easier to do this now. It would just be 1 half. So I'm going to do that same thing here. And I'm going to say that since x minus 2 squared appears in both the top and the bottom, I can cross it out. So there goes x minus 2 squared. There goes x minus 2 squared. And this is going to leave me with x minus 3 all over x squared minus 5x plus 6 except that doesn't match any of my answer choices. So now I think I need to actually go ahead and factor this x squared minus 5x plus 6. And if you remember how to factor, this is when I look for my two, let me go ahead and break this off. This is when I look for my two magic numbers, a and b, where if I multiply them, I get the number on the very end, the constant, 6. And if I add them, I get this number in the middle, the x coefficient, negative 5. Factor pairs of 6 include 1 and 6, 2 and 3. 
none of these pairs add to negative 5, but if I put a negative sign on them, they do add to negative 5. And so I'm going to go ahead and use this information. And by the way, negative 2 times negative 3 still gets me positive 6, so I'm in the clear on that. I'm going to use this information to say that now I can split this up, x squared minus 5x plus 6, into x minus 3 times x minus 2. That is still in the denominator of a rational expression with x minus 3 in the numerator, except now I have x minus 3 on top, x minus 3 on the bottom. I can do the same thing to the x minus 3s that I did to the x minus 2 squareds and cross them out. Since everything is gone from the numerator, that leaves me with 1. My denominator is just x minus 2. So there's my answer, and I intentionally wrote it right next to choice D because choice D matches exactly that.